All right, guys, good morning. We're going to start doing this floor plan. Uh, you guys should have this packet already. Uh, we're going to start from the very beginning and work through all of the steps. I'm going to go ahead and push this through all the way to step 10. Um, and we're going to start out by just looking at a few of the notes here on the drawing. First thing I want to point out is that the exterior walls are five and a half inches thick, interior walls three and a half inches thick. Um, that's going to be super important as we begin this. We're going to start with the perimeter of the building work our way all the way around using the line tool. Um, and then I'm going to show you a process where we use a tool called the polyline command. Uh, and then we're going to offset that outside wall in. We're going to then proceed to put in all the interior walls. So just be cautious of that. We're going to use, again, five and a half inches for the exterior and three and a half inches for the inside. Uh, and so we're going to start out by going to the ARL handout folder, architectural design. We have a folder called AutoCAD Skills, and we're going to go ahead and use the template that says Year One Floor Plan Blank Template. All right, so we're going to double click that. AutoCAD is going to open up, um, and this is the first project that we're using the architectural units. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify how to actually input units correctly or input dimensions correctly. Uh, so we're going to utilize this um, example of 40 feet, five and a half inches. And there's multiple ways that we can put these into AutoCAD. Um, one of the things that we want to discuss is that AutoCAD, just as a reminder, sees the space bar as an enter key. So the second you hit enter, or the second you hit the space bar, that is interpreted as the same as hitting the enter key on the keyboard. So in this instance, if I were to say, hey, I want to make a line that's 40 feet, five and a half inches long, if I typed it in like this, AutoCAD would actually draw me a line that's 40, inch, 40 feet long. And the second I hit that space right there, AutoCAD is going to enter that 40 foot, and that line is going to end up being 40 feet long. And then I'm going to type in a dash, and then I'm going to hit enter again. Um, and AutoCAD is not going to know what to do with that. So, for example, if I just came up, grabbed the line tool, clicked here as a starting point, and drug it over to the right, and I typed in 40 feet, and I hit the space bar, it instantly drew that at five or at 40 feet. Um, and it's not what I desired. And if I hit the dash key or the hyphen and I hit space again, AutoCAD's at, like, it doesn't know what I'm looking for. So we can see here that I get a red little error. Um, and so that's going to cause us problems. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this again and we're going to enter it in into one of the correct ways. Um, this first one here is a little ridiculous. I have 11 halves, which would be the same as five and a half inches. So this does compute out to 40 feet, five and a half inches. I would never in a million years type it out that way, but you certainly could if you wanted to. Um, this is the one that I probably use 99% of the time. Um, unless I'm getting down into the 16th or 32nd of an inch, I typically don't type out the fractions. Um, occasionally I do just because I don't know why, but occasionally I do. Uh, but I do want to mention that you'll see that we use the apostrophe as a foot mark, and then we use the quote as, a, as the inch mark. Uh, you're not actually required to do the inch mark, okay? So AutoCAD knows by default that we're working with inches. So even just typing in 40 feet, no space, 5.5, it's going to default that as inches. So, for example, I'm just going to draw a line again, um, and I'm actually going to turn off a couple little settings here. So I got a line up here, and I'm going to type in 40 feet, 5.5, and hit enter. And AutoCAD drew that line. And I'm going to put a dimension on there so that we can see what it dimensions at. And that dimensions out at what we wanted to do. So uh, that's just a real quick little um, intro to how we're going to enter in dimensions as we need it. So let's flip back to our floor plan and start sort of looking at what we're doing here. Um, you're free to start wherever you want. Um, I like to start in the upper left-hand corner of all my floor plans and sort of work my way around if I'm redrawing something. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pick this point here to start at. And it can just be a random point on the screen. Uh, and then I'm going to start dragging this over. So if we look here dimensionally, I have 30 feet as my rear wall dimension. I'm going to come up 2 feet, come over 13, down 38, over 20, up 6, over 12, up 2, over 11. And then I'm going to close it with a 28-foot line at the end. I'm going to use the C function to close my floor plan. So let's go ahead and jump back into AutoCAD. I'm going to start here at this point. Again, 30 feet, 2 feet, 13. So I'm going to come back in. I'm going to grab my line tool. I'm going to just pick some random spot, and I'm going to start dragging it in the right direction. 
Uh, if you happen to get this, the F8 key on your keyboard is the orthographics or ortho mode. That's going to put us into drawing straight lines. Additionally, if you like to click buttons, down here in the lower right-hand corner on the status bar, you'll be able to turn your ortho on and off from that button. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to drag this over. I'm going to type in 30 feet. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to drag it up. I'm going to type in two feet, hit enter, drag it over, 13 feet. And I'm going to continue around this floor plan. 38 feet, 20 feet, 6, 12, 2, 11. And I'm going to hit C for close. I could type in 28 feet to send it up, uh, but hitting C is just a little bit quicker. So um, I now have my floor plan drawn, the outline of my floor plan. So at this point, I'm going to start adding some exterior wall thicknesses, which again, Going back to this drawing here, uh, it tells you here it's going to be five and a half inches thick. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, type that in at 5.5 and hit enter. So I'm going to come back into AutoCAD. I'm going to grab my offset tool, which is right here. Um, I'm going to be using the keyboard. So it's O enter. First thing I'm going to do uh, until you guys get the muscle memory to know all these commands by heart, um, I'm going to read the command prompt. And the command prompt in this case says specify offset distance. Uh, and it has some other options here. We're not going to worry about the other options at this point, but the offset distance is going to be 5.5 inches. Again, I can need, I can put the inch mark. I can leave it off. I tend to leave it off. It's one less keystroke. I'm going to hit enter. And now I'm going to start. And AutoCAD, again, is now asking me, hey, select object to offset. I want to offset this. And I want it to come. AutoCAD now says specify point on the side to offset. Um, one of the things that I want to tell you to be careful about are those little O-snaps. And those little O-snaps will act, you know, they'll mess you up if you're not paying real good attention. So what I recommend is when you're offsetting, don't try to hover close to the line, right? Don't go, oh, I just want it to go this way. Just exaggerate. Click down here. And when I say click, I mean left click button. So click. I'm going to grab this little line. I'm going to drag it to the right. I'm going to click. Again, I'm over-exaggerating. Just to make sure I really get AutoCAD to understand which way I want it to go, I'm going to come up, I'm going to come over, come up, come over, come up, and lastly, come over. So uh, we have exterior walls now, but you're going to see here, I have some crossing lines that shouldn't look like that. I've got some gaps, got some crossing, got some crossing. So... At this point, I'm looking at using some trim and extend commands to make this all fill in. Um, additionally, I'm in lieu of using the trim and extend command, which would become a little challenging for this um, because basically we'd be extending to nothing. There's nothing to extend to. So this would go way over here. This one would come up into that. So for example, um, I could say extend and I said, oh, I want to extend. Let me turn this in quick mode since I think that's what most of you guys will be. Um, get out of this and start that again. So it, it really doesn't let me go anywhere. I can't see where it wants to go. But if I zoom way out, I could go like this. And then I could say, hey, I want to go there. And then I could come back in here and I could say, hey, look, let me go over to trim. And I actually want to trim this off. And then I'm going to come into here and I'm going to trim these little pieces off. And I'm just going to keep navigating around my floor plan to get rid of all these little corners. Um, so that leads me to, uh, again, you know, creating a more efficient workflow. So I'm actually going to use the fillet command. And the fillet command, if you remember, can put a radius on two lines. Um, it can do a couple other things. One of the things that it really works well as is it works well as a, sort of a trim and extend command in one. So the first thing I'm going to do is the fillet says, hey, select a first object or undo polyline radius trim multiple. So I'm going to focus on radius because I don't really want it to have a radius. I want it to kind of go to a square corner. So I'm just going to verify that it's set to zero. If it is set to zero, you can just simply hit enter. If it's not set to zero, just type in zero on your keyboard and hit enter. And what this is going to do is it's going to put me in the fillet command with a radius of zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, I want to keep this and I want to keep this. And you'll see AutoCAD makes that a nice sharp corner. Um, I want to go back and grab the fillet command again. So uh, I could come up and hit the button again and just say, hey, I want to keep this and keep that. And now AutoCAD kicks me out of the command again. Come over and do this one. Um, I can hit F, enter on my keyboard to enter fill it. Grab this and this. Let me navigate up north. Um, 
and I can hit F again on my keyboard. Additionally, if I want to save even one more keystroke, um, when you're out of a command and you hit enter um, without typing anything in, it'll instantly put you back into the last command you were in. So I'm going to fill out that corner. I'm going to hit the enter key. I'm going to keep that and that, hit the enter key, click that and that. And I've got one more to do. Oh, no, I already did that one. So right now we have all of our exterior walls drawn, all of our corners are in um, and cleaned up and filled it and everything else. Uh, but as you can tell, that took a little bit of time. So I'm going to abandon this one just for a minute. And I'm going to show you guys another way of doing this. And the way that I would recommend starting out any floor plan is actually use a polyline tool instead of just a line tool. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. And I'm going to start doing this again. So I got 30 feet, 2 feet, 13 feet, 38, 20, 6, uh, 12, 2, 11, and C for close. And so one of the things I'm going to show you right off why they're different is if I click on that out, outside line, you're going to see that it's selected just that outside line. If I now come over here and select this outside line, a huge difference. It actually selected the whole perimeter of the floor plan, uh, which is going to save us a lot of time. So now if I come up with my offset command, which I can grab with that button. Um, again, I'm a keyboard guy, so O, enter. Uh, and I'm going to, it already is defaulted to 5.5 inches, as you can see down on the command prompt. It's already typed in, so I'm just going to hit enter to accept. Now it says, hey, select an object to offset. I want to offset that, and I want to offset it inward. So I'm going to exaggerate. I'm going to come right to the dead center of the floor plan, and I'm going to click. And one thing that you're going to notice different is all of my corners are already cleaned up for me. So I don't have to take the time to do any of that trimming or ex extending or filleting. Um, it just is simply done for me. Now, this is all good, except it's just leaving me with these two lines, these two poly lines. And think of that like it's just an, it's a um, oddly shaped object. So think like a, a octagon is a polygon. Um, I just have a polygon that's oddly shaped, like a floor plan. So um, I don't want these to be polylines anymore. I want to convert these to lines. So there, there is a process to convert it. It's super simple. Underneath of your um, erase tool, there is a tool called the explode tool. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the explode tool. I'm going to highlight both of those. And I'm going to go ahead and just hit enter. And if I read the command prompt, it said, hey, explode, select objects. All I did was select them. And I hit enter to accept that. And it's good. Uh, and what you'll see here is now this here, if I click on the outside line and I click on the outside line, these two are consistent. Essentially, these two are identical. I just got to this one a lot quicker than I got to this. So um, it doesn't matter which one I keep. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep the one that's inside the box to start out. So now we're going to go back to our floor plan. And we're going to start tackling this. And we're going to call this the left side. We're going to call this the right side. Or we're going to call this the kids' bedrooms. And we're going to call this the... Um, owner suite. So we're going to start out on the kid's side. And a couple of things that I do want to point out here, I'm going to zoom in for you. Um, these dimensions have what we call tick marks. And so what I'm looking at is where the tick mark intersects with the dimension line. The dimension line is this horizontal line. Where those two intersect is where the dimension is, where the origin of the dimension is. And the other end is going to be where the destination of the dimension is. So in this case, this vertical line right here is parallel to this vertical line over here, but it's 10 foot eight and a half inches away. Okay, so again, this line here is parallel to this line, and you can see where that intersects. So it's going to give me this one. That's 10 feet eight and a half inches. Um, also, looking at this one, we're going to go down this way. This horizontal line and this horizontal line right here are 10 foot nine apart. And I can tell that because it intersects there and it intersects there. We'll talk about wall thicknesses in just a moment. So let's go ahead back to AutoCAD and I'm gonna start working on um, doing a couple different things. Let me zoom out real quick. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to establish where this vertical wall is. And I'm gonna sort of point you to this direction. Uh, right now, you guys currently have a corner right here. And so looking back at AutoCAD, this corner right here, give you a little bit more context, is that corner right there, right? So that's that spot. 
that's this spot. So uh, what I can see is that that inside line carries straight through. And you can see that these two, this line and this line don't line up, but this line does line up. So this is the line that I'm going to start with. And I'm going to drag that all the way through the entire floor plan from the front of the house to the back of the house. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go ahead and use the extend key. So I'm going to grab my extend. So EX enter. This is the line I want to shoot up that way. There we go. Uh, and now I'm going to come back to this and I'm going to go, okay, well, it's not a single line. It's actually a double line. So it's actually representing the wall. Now, going back to what we initially said, interior walls are going to be three and a half inches thick, which is basically why you have that discrepancy between here and here, right? This is an exterior wall. This is facing outside air. So this wall is exterior. This wall here is between a bedroom and a living room. This is an interior wall. This one's three and a half inches thick. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and I'm going to grab my offset tool and I'm going to tell it right now I want it to be 3.5 inches. I'm going to grab this and I want it to go to the left. And again, really exaggerate your movements. Come way far left. Now, if you look down here, I have a little bit of a, a mess to clean up. So I'm going to use my fillet tool to come back in. Click, click. And if I look up top, it's not looking too bad. It looks like I just have to do a little trim. So uh, anytime you have a T shape, just as a reminder, T is trim, right? So we're just going to kind of use the trim tool to trim that up. So anytime you have an intersection, it's going to be a um, it, it's going to be a trim tool. Anytime you have a corner, you can use fillet. So T's are trim, corners are fillets. So there we go. We got our first vertical wall. And if we look back at our floor plan, you'll see here that establishes the whole kid side of the house. So now really what I'm doing is I got to start working in these rooms. So again, looking back at this, from this line, the inside of the back wall to the inside of the kid's bedroom, we'll call this kid one, uh, that bedroom has a depth of uh, 10 foot, nine inches. So again, I'm going to come in AutoCAD, simply go O for offset. I'm going to type in 10 foot, nine inches. I'm going to grab this and again, exaggerate. I want it to go this way. So I'm going to click way down here. Click. Now, come back in AutoCAD. That wall is not a zero thickness. It's not just one line. It's a double line. Again, it's an interior wall. That wall thickness needs to be three and a half inches. So come back over here. I'm going to go ahead and say um, offset, which I'm already in. Um, so I'm going to get out of offset because it was set to 10 foot nine. So I'm going to go back into offset again. And I'm going to type in 3.5 inches. And I'm going to grab this line, and I'm going to come down. All right, jumping back, we have a little bathroom here. It's five foot from that line to that line, and then it's going to be three and a half inches. And then it's going to be the leftover 10 foot nine. So realistically, we are going to go five foot and then three and a half inches, and then we're going to say that we're done with the horizontal lines. So we're going to go ahead and jump out of offset by hitting escape, hit O oh, enter for offset again. I'm going to type in five foot. Grab this wall again, exaggerate, click. Uh, I'm going to hit escape and then enter. Back into offset, 3.5 inches. Grab this, pull it down. And I have all of my horizontal walls. And if I want to double check some net dimensions, I'm just going to hover this little uh, measure tool into the room, and you can see here it's uh, 10 foot, eight and a half wide by uh, 10 foot nine front to back. And if I come up here to verify, 10 foot, eight and a half by 10 foot nine, let's go ahead and verify the bottom room. It's gonna be the same two dimensions. So come down here, 10 foot, eight and a half by 10 foot nine. Now this room here, we have the, the, um, the depth, the top to bottom correct at five foot, but you can see here, when I look at the floor plan, I'm missing this little wall here. So. I'm going to just grab this wall, offset it over three foot one, and I'm going to offset it 3.5. So here we go. We're going to escape, escape to get out of that measure tool. Go enter. I'm going to type in three foot one. I'm going to grab this wall, shoot it over this way. Escape, enter, 3.5 inches. Gets me my wall thickness. Bring it over. And now i got some trimming to do here. So I'm going to trim these. I'm going to trim those. Uh, and then I got a T, so obviously I'm going to have to use my trim tool. I got a T over here, so I'm going to use my trim tool. That's a T. That's a T. It's going to continue to kind of push around this. This is a T. And I think we've got it all trimmed up. 
Uh, double check my measurements. I should have seven foot four by five foot, three foot one by five foot. So all of our dimensions are done. We're done on the kid's side of the room. So let's go ahead and start bouncing over to this side. All right, we're going to call this the owner's suite. And this one here, sort of the same way that we did it over here. Um, this line and this line do not line up, but we can see that this line does line up. And we can also see that that's really going to kind of establish where this whole wall is going to exist, right? They're lined up all the way up. So we're going to grab this, extend it to the top, offset it three and a half inches, and we're going to start on the next part. So grab the extend tool. I'm going to extend that up, offset 3.5 inches, shoot that to the left. It's coming here. I'm using my fillet command. And I'm going to come up here. I've got a trim to do because it's a T. Grab that. I have that established now. I'll jump back to my floor plan. Let's start figuring out what we have to do next. We're going to tackle this area here. Same thing that we did at the front where we had that little wall here that extends straight through. We can see that this and this do not align, but this does align. So we're going to go ahead and extend that line down. And then we're going to offset that three and a half inches, and we're going to start working in this room over here. So we're going to go ahead and grab the extend tool. We're going to extend that down. We're going to offset that 3.5 inches. We're going to come up here. We're going to fill it this from here to here. And now we're going to start establishing that room. So come back to our dimensions. We've got from here to here, 12 foot 5 inches, 3 and a half, or, uh, three and a half inches, and then 5 foot. So again, 12 foot 5, 3 and a half, then 5 foot. All right, so we've got a couple offsets to do. Offset. 12 foot, 5. This wall, down. 3.5 inches. This wall, down. 5 foot. This line, down. Last but not least, 3.5 inches. This line, down. And if we come back to this, we can see that we have this. We have this. Uh, what we're missing at this point is quite simply that line should extend all the way through over to here, which I'm getting ready to take care of. Uh, and then we'll do a little bit of trimming up. So we're going to go ahead and extend these, this here and this here over. Now we're starting to look like our floor plan. I got a little bit of trimming to do, so I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to clean up this T. Again, T's with trim, corners with L's. These are mostly T's, so we're almost done. We've got all that worked out. All right. Now, we have a couple more little rooms to do over here. We have this little room back here, which is going to end up being a powder room, and we have this one here that's going to end up being a laundry room. So we're going to look at this dimensionally from this point, from that back inside of that back wall to here is three foot one. Then we got three and a half inches. Then we have four feet, and then we have three and a half inches. So again, three foot one. Three and a half, four foot, three and a half. And then this here is going to end up being where it is. So let's go ahead and get in here. Offset, three foot one, enter. This line comes down, enter. In the offset again, three and a half inches down. Come back in the offset. I'll use the button that time, four foot. This line's coming down. Escape, enter, 3.5 inches. Going to get me that. Now I got a little bit more trimming up to do, so let's come in here and just clean up all these T intersections. And let's go ahead and check some dimensions. Grab our measure tool, six foot eight and a half by three foot one. That's three foot one, it's six foot eight and a half. Um, we're gonna make sure that that's four foot wide. We're gonna make sure that that's eight foot zero and one half. So that's four foot. That's eight foot zero and one half. Everything else looks like it's gonna work. That's five foot by 12 foot one. That's 12 foot five. So all of our dimensions check out and we are officially done step one. So I'm gonna go ahead and bounce over to this. Um, what I want you to do, because we're just starting out in AutoCAD, that way we can, we can correct any mistakes that we make. We're gonna go ahead and make a copy of this and we're gonna go ahead and push this off. So this is gonna be step two. And I'm going to go ahead and flip over to step two real quick. So step two, we're going to look at a couple key differences here. Um, this is a scenario that happens quite often. Our clients come back to us and they want to make some modifications. In this scenario, what we have ended up doing is we're increasing the house size. 
Um, and it happens, right? We send it out. Somebody gives us some prices. They've determined that, hey, look, we can afford a little more house. Let's go ahead and improve some of these room sizes, make them a little bit nicer. So we can see here we're starting on step one with a with a house width of 43 feet with a depth of 38 feet. So let's compare that to this. We're going to end up at 50. We're going to end up at 42. And I'm going to show you where the differences are. Um, I don't know how this is going to work, so I'm going to see if I can highlight. Let's see. Nope, that's not going to work. Let me see if I can just draw some sort of rectangle. So cutting through this area, we can see here we have a 15-foot dimension now. And if we go back, we had a 13-foot. So down here, we have 22. Up on the original, we have 20. So it to me looks like this section of the house is growing by two feet. So we're going to go ahead and use a box, sort of like what I just drew in here. We're going to use a stretch command in AutoCAD. We're going to stretch this over two feet to add that width in the house. And we're going to see what we end up with as far as some results here. So in this scenario, I'm going to grab the stretch command. Now, again, guys, um, until you get the muscle memory down, we're going to read the command prompt every time. It says select objects. Um, the stretch tool has to be done using the crossing window, which means we have to drag it to the left from the right to the left to make it green and crossing. That's the area that I want to cut through. We can see I'm going to cut through that wall right there. I'm going to cut through that wall, cut through that wall, cut through this wall. And the vertical wall on the right is fully contained with inside the box. So we have this, we're going to go ahead and click. Now AutoCAD is a very input output dependent program. So AutoCAD is asking you, hey, I want you to select objects, and I'm done selecting objects. So I just have to hit enter to tell AutoCAD that I'm ready to accept what I've already done. Now AutoCAD's asked me, hey, select a base point. I'm going to pick this point here. I'm going to drag it to the right. Um, and I drag I clicked outside and I'm over-exaggerating my drags for multiple reasons. One, I clicked outside of it so that some O snaps didn't interfere and mess me up. Two, I'm over-exaggerating my drag because I just want to make sure that I don't see any visual errors. So I'm going to go ahead and type in two feet since that's what we're increasing by. We're going to jump back to our floor plan to find some more things that might have changed. So I'm going to delete that box. Um, this section right here was 11 foot, eight and a half. Now it's going to 15 foot, eight and a half. We can also see down here at 16 feet, it used to be 12 feet, which means we're going to have an increase of uh, four feet. And that's going to look like this when I use the stretch command. All right, so oh, I hit the wrong page. We're going to go onto this page and we're going to use that. We're going to use that right there. All right, so that's where I'm going to pull my stretch and I'm going to do it almost exactly like that. Come back in AutoCAD, use my stretch tool, click on it up here. Here's the button, or I can simply hit S Enter. We'll also get to the stretch command. I'm going to do my box there. Again, I'm only cutting through this wall up here and this wall down here. Everything else is being fully contained with inside of that, which means those objects are not going to change dimensionally. They're just going to change where they're located at. So it's kind of like a move for anything inside the box. So click, hit enter, click a spot, drag it to the right. This time I'm increasing by four feet and we're good to go. Uh, bounce back to our floor plan. Let's go ahead and delete this box. Let's do this one last time. Uh, we're at 12 feet. We're at 11 foot eight, we're at eight foot four. If we go back to our original, uh, we were at 10 foot eight. So we increased by a foot. Our foot ended up going through our bathroom and our foot ended up going through our bottom bed because that went to 12, that went to eight four, that went to 11 eight. So my stretch is gonna look something like that, okay? So coming back into AutoCAD, I can do it that way. Uh, additionally, I could come into AutoCAD and actually do it this way. I could drag my, my rectangle that direction as well. Um, but I have to start here and end up down here again because i got to use that crossing. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to demo that. If I go this way, it's blue. And if I said, oh, I just need to increase it by one foot, I'm just going to type in 12 inches. And that caused me an error that I don't want to deal with. I could go in there, extend that. That's just more work. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and use my stretch command. I'm going to use the crossing window. I'm going to drag from right to left. Click. I'm done selecting. I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to move it over that way. I'm going to type in one foot. I'm going to hit enter. And we're just going to check a dimension or two just to make sure that we got everything right. That's 11, eight and a half. That checks. That's 15, eight and a half. That checks. And lastly, this one here is going to go over to 14, one, 21, one, so on and so forth. 
So we are good. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, say that we're done step two. And we're going to bounce into step three. So let's go back to our floor plan. Oh, before we do that, sorry. I'm going to hit escape, escape. Again, we're going to make a copy at every step. I'm going to use my copy tool, select all of these objects, hit enter to accept that I'm done selecting, click a point, slide it over. We're ready to start step three. So let's go in and see what we got for step three. We need that. Come down to step three. All right. What we're going to notice here is that these bedrooms are starting to get some closets. So we've got a closet here that's six foot one. And again, we're going to look at the interior, right? So we're going from the inside wall to the inside wall, and then we've got a three and a half inch width. Same thing here, right? We're coming from the inside, two foot one up, and then we've got a three and a half inch thick wall. Same dimensions for this one. So let's go ahead and tackle these two bedrooms, and we're going to show you two different ways to do this real quick. So starting out in this corner, I'm going to go ahead and say offset six foot one. This wall goes this way, offset two foot one. This wall goes this way. Again, exaggerating. Offset, I gotta give a wall thickness 3.5 inches. This goes out, this goes out. Uh, I want this to be a corner. It's not currently a corner, but I want it to be a corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my fillet tool. I wanna keep this and this, hit enter to go back in the fillet. I wanna keep that and that, that is done. Trim, because they're T's and T's, and my closet there is done. I could do the exact same thing down here. Um, to me, I'm going to tell you, honestly, that'd be a waste of time. Since I know it's an exact copy, um, and if you look at it and we think back to our old tools, there's a line of symmetry right here that exists. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my mirror tool. I'm going to come up here, grab these items, hit Enter. AutoCAD says, oh, let me start that command over. So grab mirror, AutoCAD, hey, select objects. I got them. Hit enter to accept. Now it says, hey, select the first point of the mirror line. So I'm going to go ahead and grab here. I'm going to drag that straight out. And once I'm done, AutoCAD asks me one more question. It says, hey, do you want to erase the source objects, yes or no? I'm going to say no. I do not want to erase the source objects. Um, if I wanted to get rid of these, I would just hit yes. It would get rid of them. I'm going to go ahead and delete that line. I didn't really need that line. I just drew that to show you. I'll do that one more time without that line. Mirror, done. Hey, where's your line of symmetry? It's crossed there, and it goes this direction. Click. Do you want to delete the source? No, I do not. Um, and really, all I have to do is one little trim here and one here. And now my closet for that room is done. So let's go ahead and progress around the house and look and see what else we got. Uh, looks like we've got some closets added to this room here. And I want you guys to be cautious. Um, you currently have this wall, and your wall goes all the way through. Okay, you remember we did the five-foot dimension? So you have this line and this line, and right now your lines are dotted straight across here. Your wall sort of looks like this. Don't hold me to it exactly, but your wall sort of looks like that existing. So we need to take those lines and offset them up two foot one, offset them up three and a half inches. And then we're going to come four foot nine from this side over, come four foot nine from this side over, and then we're going to go three and a half inches in, three and a half inches in. So sounds complex, but let's go ahead and just run through it and we'll get it down pretty quick. So come back over to this area, offset two foot one. This is going to go up. We're going to go offset 3.5 inches. This is going to go up. We're going to go offset four foot nine inches. This line's coming in. This line is coming in. Since they were both four foot nine, I didn't have to do it twice. Offset three, three and a half inches. Coming in, coming in. I got a couple things that I got to clean up here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the trim tool because I want that to look like T's, right? They're going to T here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the trim tool. Get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. Get rid of this, get rid of this, and get rid of this. Now, you'll notice something's not quite right. Um, it left those little line segments. That's going to happen sometimes. We just got to clean them up by highlighting them and hitting delete. Um, or we can use the erase tool, select them, get rid of them. Either way works. Um, I tend to grab them first and then just hit the delete key on your keyboard, which is just north of your arrow keys. All right, sorry. Um, now we got to clean up this area here. and. 
I know what we're thinking. Hey, we're trying to make a corner. And I've said already, hey, when you're making a corner, uh, we're going to go ahead and use the fillet tool. However, in this scenario, it's probably not the absolute best tool. And I'm going to demo why. Um, and you could probably already predict. Um, if I say fillet this and this, and then I say fillet this and this, I no longer have those lines anymore. So I have a couple options. I could delete this. I could mirror this and bring it along this line. And actually, that worked out extremely well. It sort of has everything done for me. Um, if you don't quite feel comfortable doing that, this one here is going to be a little bit of extend and trim. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my, I'm going to go ahead and grab my extend tool, and I'm going to go ahead and click here and here, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, the the extend tool. If I hold the shift key down, it converts it into the trim tool temporarily. So I'm just holding the shift key down and I'm using the trim tool um, to go ahead and get rid of these couple little spots that needed to be cleaned up. And either way. That worked. We got the we got what we needed, um, and I'm going to flip back to my floor plan to make sure that I didn't miss anything. We had those closets. We added these closets, and I do think we are done. Step four, so or step three. So let's go ahead and scroll down to step four. Uh, in AutoCAD, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy. We now have step four. So we have one, two, three, four. This one has the closets, um, and this one's going to take us a little bit of time. So We'll run through this uh, right now. What we're going to focus in on is starting to add in windows, and you're going to see a lot of dimensions along the top. You're going to see a lot of dimensions in along the bottom, um, and all the way around the house. To be honest with you, so we're going to start again. I like to start in the back left-hand corner. It's just where I have found that I start most times. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to look at this uh, this callout for this window, and this callout is identified as a three o five o. This one over here is called out as a 2030. Um, and basically what that means is three foot zero inches by five foot zero inches. So it's really, that's what it's saying. Now, since we're only working in a floor plan, we don't even need to know what it looks like height wise. So just imagine that this does not exist. We're gonna go ahead and cross that out. We're gonna go ahead and highlight this um, and say that we're really gonna focus on that this is a three foot wide window. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to just start here and we're going to try to find the center of this window. So it's going to be an offset of three foot and then an offset of six foot. So let's come back. We're going to go offset three foot, grab this, push it over, and then we have an offset of six foot. Six foot, that's going to go over there. So I have these two lines here. They're just my center lines for my windows. I'm going to come back to this floor plan because I want to point out something that's written in here for you. Uh, we're going to introduce something called the design center. And to add it, we're going to hit the control. We're going to hold the control button down on the keyboard. We're going to tap the number two. And it's going to pop up with this really fancy box inside of AutoCAD. Uh, what this box does is it allows you to use pre-existing drawings to uh, use as assets for whatever drawing we're working in. So in this scenario, we have 25 windows to draw. And it would be redundant and ridiculous to draw all of those windows over and over and over and over. So AutoCAD uses something called blocks, and we insert blocks into a drawing. And we're going to do that using the design center. So again, the, the name of the objects are going to be called blocks, um, and they're pre-made symbols. We're going to use a command called insert to actually put those into the drawing. And the design center is going to kind of be the interface that makes that happen a little more graphic with me. So we're going to come back into AutoCAD. Um, I already have my design center turned on. You might see it over here on the left. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control F2, or I'm sorry, Control 2. And you can see my design center disappeared. I'm going to tap it again. It came back. So the next thing that you'll see here that it tells you to do is it says, hey, browse to the ARL handed architectural design. CAD lib, which is CAD library. And then we're going to look for a folder called dynamic blocks. So mine's a little bit different because I'm working on my, uh, I'm working off of my computer. However, I do have a CAD library. We can see here it has a whole bunch of folders in it. I'm going to scroll down here where it says dynamic blocks and I'm going to simply click on it. And this is the, this is the start of where we're going to go. So it says use win. For windows, use door for single swing doors and use D door for double swing doors. So uh, again, we're going to just take this for a second. We're going to highlight this so that we keep this in our minds. 
So we're going to say wind, door, double door, E door. Okay. We're going to highlight back in here. Uh, and if we look here, I have dynamic blocks highlighted. And you'll see here I have a little block here called window, wind. So I'm going to drag that in. And it's going to pretty much be stuck to my cursor. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put it at the end point of that line. And AutoCAD's asked me a couple things. Again, always read your command prompt. Hey, it says, uh, what's your scale for X, Y, Z? I'm just going to hit enter. I want it to be one. And then it says, hey, what angle do you want it to be inserted? Well, in this scenario, just zero enter is fine. You can just hit enter on your keyboard because I wanted the orientation that it showed. Uh, when we get to a side, we may actually want to click vertical, or we might want to type in 90 degrees, or we might want to type in negative 90 or 270. So again, in this scenario, I'm just going to hit enter because zero is our is our default. Uh, and it sort of half puts in a window. At this point, I can delete that line. Uh, and now I have a window. It's not quite sized properly, but I'm going to go ahead and grab this. And I'm going to grab that little um, that little grip at the bottom that looks like an arrow. Now, I want it to go to this wall. And if you've seen that little O snap pop up, even though it doesn't look like it's going to work, it's going to work. I'm going to click on that endpoint, and we're going to see that it drug it down to where I wanted it to be. Um, this window symbol is now in. I'm going to go ahead and use the um, trim command to clean up over that window. That part's not super important right now, but it does sort of give us a little bit of a head start. So, again, I'm going to sort of pop this in. Um, one of the things that I didn't go over real quick, and I'll do it with this one, is I didn't talk about the size of the window because I know that the default for this for this particular block is three feet, which is our desired result. But let's go ahead and click this one in. Um, on your keyboard, you have an F11 and F12 key. So at this point, I'm going to just tell you to tap both of those. That way, when you highlight this, um, we're still going to drag this down to the right spot. But this time, what you're going to see is that that dimension popped up. And what that dimension is, is that's one of our dynamic input, which is controlled by F12. Um, and so we know, because we did this drawing, that the walls are five and a half inches thick. So in this scenario, instead of me having to go out and get this little endpoint or grab this intersection, I could simply drag this thing out and type in 5.5. Because I know that's what the thickness of the wall is. Um, I still like just clicking. Uh, but again, you know, you can do it either way. I'm going to drag it up to some random spot. I'm going to drag this back down to this. Now, additionally, we're going to look at the width of this window. So I'm going to grab this grip here. And I'm going to start dragging it. Now you can see here I can change the width of the window. And going back to the floor plan, we can see that this one's supposed to be a 3050. So no big deal. But this one here, we're going to have to change to a 20. So let's go ahead and uh, leave this one at three foot. This one's good. I'm going to delete that line. I'm going to use my trim to clean that little spot up. Um, and I actually made a little bit of an error there. Um, and I made an error because I had a three foot line and I had a six foot line. And now I got to get all the way over to eight foot 11 and a half from that. And I deleted this line. So I have to do a couple things. One, I either have to offset three, offset six, and then offset eight foot 11 and a half. Or in this scenario, I'm just going to take a second, add nine foot to this. So I'm going to end up being 17 foot 11 and a half inches for my offset. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the offset 17 foot 11.5 inches. And you'll see there when I entered that in, I didn't do any spaces, um, I didn't do any dashes, I didn't do any fractions, I just simply typed in 17 foot 11 and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that, I'm going to click this line, drag it over this way, we're going to go ahead and drag window symbol, oh, I'm in an offset, I escape. I'm going to go ahead and drag in the window symbol at this point, grab that, enter, enter, change the depth to five and a half inches. Change the width to two feet, hit enter. That's where it should be. Um, I'm not going to make the same mistake again and delete that yet. So let's go ahead and come over. We're going to offset six foot two and a half to get to the middle of our sliding glass door. This is a little bit trickier. So let's go ahead and discuss that one. So offset six foot two and a half. Send it that way. Now, um, there is not a really good block for this. So what we actually have to do is we actually have to cut the hole for the door. And again, just remember that 
this is the number we're looking at. That stands for six foot zero inches. So I know this opening for this door is six foot. Well, I also know that I have it located at the middle. So three foot on the left, three foot on the right. That's going to be my my uh, spacing for my. That's going to be my spacing for my my door opening. So we're going to come back into AutoCAD. We're going to take this line here. We're going to offset it three foot to the left. We're going to offset it three foot to the right. And I'm going to get get out of that for a second. I'm going to go ahead and use my trim tool. I'm going to go ahead and trim across there and trim this out. That leaves us my door opening, and that's trimmed and ready to go. So let's go ahead and find that door. And since this is a six-foot door, six foot, if we pull up a calculator, six times 12 is 72 inches. So we know it's a 72-inch seven, wide door. Um, and you're going to see in here that there is no sliding glass door. So we're actually going to go into a different uh, folder over here, and it's called DM Blocks. We're going to go into that. We're going to scroll down towards the bottom. We are looking for a slider right, which is an SR, and we're going to look in for an SR72 because it's 72 inches. I'm going to go ahead and drag this in. You're going to see here, here's my door. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I would place this door here, enter, 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 grab this, and I'm going to actually use the move command. So I'm going to say move. What do I want to move? I want to move the door. Where do I want to move it from? I want to move it from that spot. And where do I want to move it to? I want to move it to the midpoint. And my door has now been prop. My sliding glass door has now been properly placed. So let's go out to our floor plan. Look, we got a couple more windows to take care of over here. So we're going to go four foot six from the right side in. And we're going to go four foot six from the left side in. And we're going to get those two windows knocked out. So offset four foot six. Click, click. Click in. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to come back to our dynamic blocks folder. We're going to drag in a window. I'm going to go ahead and pop that window in there. Enter, enter. Drag in a window again. Get it over on this other intersection. Enter, enter. And now we're just going to do the same thing again, right? Drag these windows down, get them to the right depth, the right sill depth. Delete these two lines since I know I don't have anything else I have to use them for. Use my trim command. Clean across the windows, clean across the windows. That's done. I can now clean up those lines. I'm going to trim across this window to clean that one up. So that whole back wall is done. Um, and I realized that I never stretched out this section here, which was supposed to be four foot deeper. Um, I just noticed that I missed that. See here, it says six foot, uh, which is part of the reason why I say we should copy stuff. So here we go. We're just going to go ahead and stretch that out to go ahead and make that be six feet. And that's my apologies for missing that earlier. Um, so that's all repaired. Uh, let's come in here and knock out these side windows, three foot six and then seven foot 11 and a half. So three foot six, seven foot 11 and a half. Come in here, offset three foot. Click, click, seven foot 11.5 inches. We're gonna send that down. We're gonna bring a window in. Here's a scenario where we're going to rotate it when we bring it in. We're going to put it here. We're going to hit enter and we're going to drag it this way. So I'm actually going to type in negative 90 so I don't accidentally hit it in the wrong spot. I'm going to do the same thing again. Let's grab it here, click negative 90, and I'm going to start dragging these windows to the right down. Erase. Uh, let me double check that I don't need that again. That wall doesn't have anything else. So I can go ahead and delete that. I'm going to go ahead and trim across there. Uh, uh oh, I'm going to pan up here. Drag that out. Erase that. Trim across here. There we go. Uh, we're going to start on the left side of the house. Has no windows, and now we're going to come across the front side of the house. Um, and I would normally do these first, but I'm going to skip those for now. I'm going to start over here and work my way over. Uh, looks like I got three foot. From the edge in, three foot from the edge in, and then I've got five foot to the center. So let's go ahead and get all those offsets done. Offset, three foot, bring that in, bring that in, offset five feet, bring that in, and let's go ahead and drag in some windows at this point. So I'm going to get this one down here. Uh, now this one here, uh, default would go that way. That's not the way I want it, so i got to go this way. So 
I think I can type in negative zero, and I can't do it that way. So negative zero does not work. We actually have to spin this one around. We should have typed in 180, uh, but either way, we got it. Let's go ahead and drag in this next window. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click here. Enter, and I'm just going to drag it this direction and click. Drag that up, hit that spot. Um, I don't need these anymore. I'm going to go ahead and erase those. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim across here and across here, and we are good. Um, this window here is a little tricky. So you guys can see it's a double window at this case. Um, so I want to approach this one a little bit differently. I'm just going to use a single window and draw a line between them. But I have a three-foot window and a three-foot window, which is going to make it a six-foot window. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in this window again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop it in on that spot, hit enter, drag it this direction, click. Um, I'm going to drag this sill depth out to five and a half, but this time I'm going to change the width of the window to six feet. Hit enter. And when I do a little bit of trimming this time, I'm just going to be a little more strategic on my trim. I'm going to trim there and there, and I'm going to trim that off. And I'm going to extend that little piece forward just so it looks like a double window. And we are good to go. We're ready to start navigating to our next little spot which is going to be right there, which is going to be our first door. And if we look here, our door to the center point of the door is two foot six. So we're going to go ahead and offset two foot six inches. We're going to bring that over. Um, and now doors are a little bit tricky. I like to grab this and just kind of drag it in a little bit just to give me a, a wider um, center line. Now, when I drag a door in, I'm going to go ahead and drag a door in just to show you what happens here. The door wants to come in on the hinge. And if we go back to this, we can see that, number one, our hinge is on the opposite side. Uh, number two, we don't really know where the hinge point is. We just know where the center is. So what we do know that the width of the door is three foot. So we know that it would be a foot and a half to the right and a foot and a half to the left. So there's a couple different ways that we can do this. The first way is I could just put the door in over here, enter, enter. And then I could use my offset, my offset command and say one foot six. And I could bring it this way and I could bring it the other way. It doesn't really matter at that point. Now I have the door and I can bring it from this point. I'm going to grab that little bullet and I'm going to put it right there. Um, and I've got my door perfectly centered where it should be. So that's one way to do it. I would come in here, erase these lines. Um, I'm going to click on the door. I'm going to grab this little arrow, extend this out. And now I'm going to flip the door. So I actually have everything where I want it. I would trim the cross there. And that door has been put in properly. Um, I'm going to step back a little bit. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I wouldn't take the time to do that. What I would do is I just take this door, bring it from that point right there, and I'm going to put it right here, which we all agree that's in the wrong spot. Um, however, I can erase this line at this point since I know it is located at the center. Now I'm going to use my move command, and I'm just going to highlight the door, say I'm done selecting, drag it to the left, one foot, six inches, it's where it should be. And I'm just going to drag that down to the right spot. I'm going to go ahead and flip this door, and I'm going to go ahead and trim out the walls. So both ways work. I think the second way is a lot more efficient. And we are good to go. We're going to start progressing on to our garage doors, which I'm going to tell you guys right ahead of time. I do not have symbols pre-drawn for the garage doors. They are simply rectangles. Uh, you can show them about two inches thick, maybe an inch and a half. It really doesn't matter. It's just a symbol. But um, we're looking at a two foot wide. And then we have an eight foot. And then a two foot wide. And then we have an eight foot. So we're going to go ahead and use some offsets here, and I'm going to start out using the two-foot offset, so I'm going to say offset, two-foot, I'm going to bring that in, I'm going to bring that in, now I'm going to go back in the offset and say eight feet, I'm going to bring this over, and I'm going to bring this over. And now I'm going to go ahead and use my trim command, and I'm going to trim across here, and I'm going to trim across here, and trim across here. And so now I have my openings for my garage doors. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just draw a rectangle. I'm going to start it here, and I'm going to go ahead and just use um, the dimension tools here. So I'm going to type in 8 foot. I'm going to hit the tab key to shift me over to the uh, to the vertical height, and I'm just going to type in 2 inches, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. 
I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time so that I have my other garage door. Um, in reality, uh, right now, just do the command twice. Uh, if I was doing this for anything, trying to be really efficient, I would have just copied the other door. So I'm going to type in 8B to tap tab, type in two inches, hit enter, and I have my garage doors. Uh, so I'm going to zoom out real quick, show you guys we have all the windows and doors on the exterior of the home. And I do believe that we are done with that step. We're going to go ahead and make an additional copy, drag this over. And we're going to come back out to this and start looking at what step five is going to do. So step five is starting to add in our interior doors. And we have the kid side and we have the owner side. So we're going to focus in on the kid side to start out with. And then we'll start navigating over to this side. Again, the call outs for the doors are going to work exactly like the windows. That is five foot zero inches. That's what we're worried about. This one here is two foot six inches. Again, the height, we're not going to worry about. The height is six foot eight, but we're not going to worry about that because we can't see it in 3D. So let's start with this door here. Um, and we're going to drag this over in just a minute. So we have to start at two foot six. We're going to bring in a door. So we're going to bring in a single door. And we're going to drag it into the corner. Click a spot and it's random for now. We're going to go ahead and click on this. This is going to give us a size. We're going to type in two foot six. We're going to flip the door the right way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at where this thing's placed. And we can see it's not really perfectly in the corner. Um, I like to hold four inches here. Uh, this is just a symbol. So you can kind of just make it look like that. But for good practice, I would say keep it at four inches. I'm going to go ahead and drag this corner to here, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the move command, drag this over to the left and hit four, enter. And now I have that door in the right spot. I'm gonna go ahead and use the trim tool and that is gonna be how we insert doors. Um, I'm gonna do a part two and continue this and we will be back.